Hi, Chris Glynn here with the Nightlight Podcast. Author and blogger Chastity Dawn is with us once again on the program, talking to us online from Atlanta, Georgia. Welcome back, Chastity. Well, thank you for having me back. <laughs> First of all, it's uh, such a great pleasure. This is your second time on the show. A lot of people really enjoyed your last class and have been looking forward to the next one. What's on the menu today? I am talking today about obedience in the kingdom of God. You talked about the kingdom of God also in your last class. This must be one of your favorite topics. It is. And um, everything I do at this point, I try to apply a kingdom mindset. Previously, I spoke about seeking the kingdom of God and the simplicity of a relationship with God. And I chose obedience this time because it's one of the hardest things to do in our journey. But I found that everything is more easily understood, at least by me, when I apply a kingdom perspective to it and what it should look like in the kingdom of God. Right. So I talk about the kingdom so much because I really want to convey that I'm not speaking about the human realm, but about the spiritual realm, because Jesus spoke about the kingdom so much in, in his teachings when he walked the earth. And so I'm walking out my journey based on Jesus's instruction in Matthew 6, Which says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Thank you. So Leading up to that verse, Jesus explains why we don't need to worry about our needs being met. He said to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things would be added to us. And so to me, once I understood that, it just meant that I don't need to worry about anything like you know he, he said it specifically like don't worry about what you will eat or what you will drink or what you will wear that's right and so i really found that in my experience with going to church and everything i've learned no one seemed to be really focusing on understanding the kingdom and so that's why i focus on it so much and i understand now that when i stop worrying about everything else in this world and seek the kingdom through reading God's word, talking with him, listening to him and obedience to his will, everything does truly work out and he does meet my needs. Switch off and switch on to Nightlight. Chastity, tell us more about the kingdom of God. How do you view the structure of the kingdom. Regarding the kingdom, I want to reiterate the structure because I think it's important to understand that. So the kingdom of God is a colony and an invisible realm here on earth. Right. It's revealed to those who are seeking God's kingdom and righteousness with their entire heart. And as I mentioned before, and I'll probably say it over and over again, we do that through reading God's word, talking with him, listening to him and obedience. And so as followers of Christ with the Holy Spirit within us, the kingdom is within us and we must understand it in order to understand how to navigate it. And so that's the kingdom of God here on earth that is within us. Yes. The kingdom of heaven is where God lives in the spiritual realm, and that is our home government. Right. And so God created the earth and he created mankind for his glory. And each of us has an assignment that we need to carry out while we're here on earth. The Bible is our constitution, and it's a guide to navigating our colony, the kingdom of God here on earth. Yes. Once we understand the kingdom as a government, we can and we should approach life differently because we begin to discover that we can truly have on earth as it is in heaven or I'll say the best version of that that is possible, because we do have to navigate a human realm where there's sin in the world. That's right. I, mm -hmm. I like to say we can have on earth as it is in heaven, but it's going to be not exactly like heaven. Like I said, it'll be the best version of that that's possible. And so we must navigate the human realm, the physical realm, with a spiritual or kingdom mindset in every area of our lives. It's a bit like having dual citizenship. You know, we're in right. this world, but not of it. If you don't mind, please read John fifteen nineteen. If ye were of the world... The world would love his own, but because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. 
Thank you. So yes, we are in this world, but not of it. The focus on the kingdom, this is not something new. It is something that I learned from a teacher named Miles Monroe, and he passed away, I believe, in 2014. But fortunately, so many of his teachings are still out there. He focused on understanding the kingdom as our home government and how that should help us to navigate our our life here on earth. We all know that Bible verse about seeking the kingdom, but there's so much more to it than I ever learned in any church or even in my own study uh, until that perspective was presented to me. And it was really like, you know, once I understood the kingdom and the structure and how seeking the kingdom should be my sole focus, it helped me to stop using willpower, right. I'll say, to follow God's will for my life and use the power of the kingdom within me through the Holy Spirit. Shining Love's Light. You're listening to Night Light. Okay, Chastity, now that we understand more clearly what the kingdom of God is, tell us about the importance of obedience within the kingdom of God. So obedience is a really big topic. And the reason why I feel compelled to focus on it today is because the gray area is disappearing. I'm going to actually contradict myself and say the gray area doesn't even exist. Okay, It is something that was created by the world. And we know that Satan is the God of the world. And so we must understand what God put us here to do because that gray area, I mean, there's so many things going on in the world. And I believe that many of us are beginning to feel that separation where there's a clear divide between good and evil. That's right. And so I think it's important for each of us as believers to understand what God put us here to do because I mean, we've got an assignment and we need to focus on that because of that gray area that truly does not exist, but I'll say it's disappearing, you know? Yes. And if we want to walk in victory, God's perspective absolutely must dominate our lives. And we have to have the courage to not conform to the ways of the world. Amen. You know, like I said, things are crazier than ever. And regardless of what one believes about the end times, For each of us, we don't know if we are in our own end time, right? So none of us knows the day or the hour. Very true. I heard a quote about procrastination, and it went something like, procrastination is the biggest liar and thief because it always tells you you'll do it tomorrow or at some point in the future when the time is right. And quite frankly, when God tells you to do it, the time is right. Amen. And none of us knows our day or hour or the day or hour of Jesus's return. So either way, whether Jesus comes back or if we die, we need to be ready. And I think we each talk about how, you know, we want to hear that, you know, well done, good and faithful servant. But if you're not doing, (laughs) you know, we can't have any expectation to hear that. And so that's why we're focusing on obedience today. And at the end of the day, God's will will be done. Yes, it will. I've had conversations with people about that statement because like when they're going through something, we tend to say, well, you know, God's will will be done. And I've heard people say it almost as if it doesn't matter what they do. That's right. And so in the bigger picture, yes, God's will is going to be done. But the focus on obedience is because I'm asking the question, what about you? Where do you stand? Amen. Because we need to be clear about which side we're standing on. Because the book has been written, the Bible, our Constitution, we know the story, right? And we know that God's will will be done and we can trust but we need to understand and be very clear about which side of that we're on. Absolutely. So how would you define obedience? I mean, I think basically that obedience means surrender to God's will, right? <laughs> exactly. You just answered the question. So, <laughs> But it's it's so extensive. But I guess obedience is simply full surrender to God's will for our lives in every area of our lives. Amen. It is full surrender of our desire to remain comfortable, our desire to control outcomes, and it requires total trust in God. 
and not the world to meet our needs. God will use things in this world to do so, but not always in the way we think. So we have to be careful not to fall into the trap of what the world says or or what our human nature says. We need to focus only on what God says. And that's right. Regarding obedience and seeking God's kingdom and righteousness, one pastor I heard said, he said, righteousness is a lifestyle of total obedience to God's will from the heart. It's not forced. It is a joyful service to God. Whatever God says, I do. Righteousness is simple obedience to God's word through the indwelling power of Christ. Wow. I thought that was really powerful um, because it, it really does sum it up. You know, it does. Some people struggle with the word obedience because, you know, once we grow up and we become adults and we get to make our own choices, we don't want to hear anything about, you know, doing what someone else says. And we tend to struggle with authority, you know, yes. that's our human nature. And so many times it's deeply rooted in our formative years and for any number of reasons. And so it could have to do with religion or any other things that may have been forced upon us. But, right. you know, some of us, obedience may have been used to manipulate and control our human nature's default setting seems to be one of rebellion, basically. That's true. And when we become adults, we enjoy that perceived freedom of making choices for ourselves. And God gives us free will, and we can make those choices. But those choices have been influenced more than likely by the conditioning of the world and our our experiences. And so I think it's important to deconstruct and question everything and understand if what we believe is a result of what the world has forced upon us or if it's what God says. Because if we take into consideration our ego and our pride, you know, those things are built upon things of the world and it really has no place in our relationship with God. Absolutely. If we're not careful, we can fall into this overinflated sense of self and you know, live our lives as if we know better than God. It may not be intentional, but again, our human nature and our default setting tends to be one of disobedience, tends to be one of rebellion. We want to be the masters of our fate. We want to control our destiny. And this world teaches us that we can, and we have free will. So it's really hard to to navigate when you're speaking about the word obedience because you do it goes back to that full surrender to God. That's right. There's a a peace that comes with that, but we really do have to I guess quite frankly the easiest way to say it is like we have to get over ourselves, you know, right. and and submit fully to God's will. It's important in every area of our lives. We don't get to pick and choose Many times we're obedient in some areas of our lives, and we may be under the illusion of obedience because we're doing good things, but we may not have an awareness of the things that we're doing that are based on our own will. And we may go through the motions and do things mindlessly, or again, it goes back to being driven by the conditions of the world. And so it's easy to get distracted and also to confuse doing good things with believing that we're doing things according to God's will, and it's not always the case. That's very true. We may not have an awareness, but you know, our desire, and, and as human beings, we are driven by this desire to ensure that our needs are met, right? Right. The human realm keeps us concerned with our circumstances. And so many times we may not question, like if we talk about our job, for example, I think I want to touch on our careers because of the fact that it's tied to meeting our needs and it's where our income comes from. Right. I want to stress the fact that when I say that it's important in every area of our lives, that includes what we're doing for a living to meet our needs. We grow up and we go down this path and when you become an adult, you have bills that need to be paid. And That's right. if you have a family, you know, you have children and you are responsible for meeting their needs. Yes. It can be overwhelming. And so a lot of times 
we just go through the motions because the bottom line is we just need to make sure that our needs are met. Obedience in our job, what that may look like, I think a lot of times we think you need to do something unique and extraordinary or really creative and And that's not the case. For example, we think that we don't need a normal occupation. Like we wouldn't think of someone like an accountant as someone who is operating in their God-given gift or, or things like that. Just because you don't have something creative, like maybe God didn't call you to write a book or to to speak publicly or preach publicly. Right. And whatever he's called you to do, that becomes your ministry. Basically, the key is understanding, even in our career, what job did God put you here to do? Because the thing is, just because you can do something doesn't mean that's what you should be doing. Very true. And just because you don't believe that you can do something, it doesn't mean that's not what you should be doing. Because when God gives you the assignment, He's going to equip you with whatever he needs you to do um, to be able to successfully carry out that assignment. You may be great with numbers. You may be uh, an accountant. You may be called to be a plumber. You know, there are any number of occupations that we may have. And in various seasons of our lives, if you're called to do it, like I said, that becomes your ministry. You will be the best at it. People will get a chance to experience a glimpse of the kingdom every time they interact with you, whether you talk with them about God or not. Amen. There's just this light that shines within you when you are walking out your journey according to God's will. Praise God. You can use that job to glorify God, and he's going to bless that if that's what he put you here to do. Amen. I think there's a certain level of peace that comes with it as well when we know that we're doing what God has put us here to do. One other thing that we should understand is that just because you are an accountant or plumber or real estate agent in this season, you may get a new assignment tomorrow. And so one of the most important things is that We can't get attached to any assignment. We should only carry out that assignment for the season in which he has, you know, told us to do that. Yes, that's true. I know that I'm painting a very black and white picture, but, and I know that life is hard and we have needs that need to be met, but it is really important to, to check in and just make sure that our lives are in alignment in every area of what God wants us to do. Amen. It requires an unnerving amount of faith. Uh huh. I always say that this journey is not for the faint hearted. And I kind of laugh when I say that, but you know how you hear people say faith is like a muscle, right? They use that uh, analogy or metaphor. I just picture it like being so fatigued that you are just shaking, but you're standing firm. When you are in that season where God is calling you to do something and to step out of your comfort zone, like one of the hardest things to contend with is that sometimes God will give us an assignment and it makes no logical sense. You're like, okay, I have needs that need to be met. I have a family to feed or, you know, I have a mortgage to pay and we have to move forward anyway. Yes. That's why I say it requires this unnerving amount of faith because you really do have to trust God. But when we do that, there's so much growth that happens in that moment because it brings us so much closer to God when we see like, wow, I stepped out on faith and I trusted him when nothing made sense and he met my needs. You know, it it worked out perfectly. Yes. I think the more we do it, the more we begin to see that he truly does make sure all of our needs are met. But each time you receive a new assignment, you may feel that fear all over again, you know? Yes. To extend it beyond our career, like it applies to everything, how we raise our children, where we live, where we give, every single thing. And the beauty of it is that each of us gets a customized experience for our walk with God. Praise God. And 
I love that because it just shows how much he pays attention to each of us and our needs. And he knows how to deal with us, how to hand down that assignment to us and whatnot. So it's a beautiful thing, but it can be very, very unnerving. And again, I think one of the important things that I even shared last time, God needed to deal with me specifically where attachments were concerned. We have to remember that we can't be attached to anything in this world because if a new assignment comes, we need to be ready to move. And amen. I use an example of volunteering. You feel a nudge from the Holy Spirit and, and the Holy Spirit tells you to move on. And the example I picture is someone who's volunteering, for example, in a church, okay. right? Say they are working on something that not many people, or maybe there's no one else there who can can do it. And you've been you know, volunteering for quite a while. They've gotten used to having you there and they've gotten comfortable with being able to rely on you. But then you feel a nudge from the Holy Spirit telling you that it's time for you to move into something new. Yes. You're looking in the human realm at the fact that they need you. There's no one else to carry out this assignment. And the moment you feel that nudge from the Holy Spirit, it, it's funny how this works, but I, I just imagine that's when they'll come to you and tell you, oh man, we really appreciate so much, you know, the work that you do. And, and they give you all this praise. And that makes it even harder to move on from that. I'm sure. But once we receive that assignment and we get that nudge from the Holy Spirit, and this is whether we're volunteering or whether it's a, you know, something that's tied to our income. The moment we become out of alignment with God's will, if we ignore that nudge from the Holy Spirit, we may delay or altogether forfeit what God wants to do in our lives. And this kind of ties back to how just because we're doing a good thing does not mean we are walking in obedience to God's will for our lives because very true here in the human realm. Yeah, it's great to say that you volunteer, you know, for your church or or for whatever, you know, that you're doing to to help make this world a better place or whatever you believe you're if it's near and dear to your heart, I guess. And so when the Holy Spirit says to move on, it's so important not to overstay that assignment because we've gotten comfortable or because our ego is being fed, you know, because they're they're praising us for the work that we do. Or we're just scared to take that next step because maybe the Holy Spirit has not revealed it and said, this is where you're you're going to go. The Holy Spirit may just say, it's time to step away from this. And that could be a job, a volunteer situation or whatever. But the next step will be revealed as soon as you're obedient to the first step. That's right. A lot of times people in doing our, our good things, you know, will say things like, well, God knows my heart. And, you know, because of Jesus, we now live under grace. All those things are true, but I feel like we have to be careful with that because it's not our works that get us to heaven, but we need to make sure we're not using the God knows my heart or, you know, because of Jesus, we live under grace as an excuse for our disobedience. Many times we'll say, when you feel that nudge from the Holy Spirit, it's like, well, yeah, but I can't do that right now. Yeah, but I have this mortgage. Yeah, but they need me. <laughs> and so the moment you say, yeah, but we need to stop and we need to reflect because human reasoning will lead us down the wrong path. It's nightlight. What a delight. For my journey, I guess to, to sum that up about God knows my heart and living under grace, what I understand for my journey is that, well, this probably applies to everyone. There's a difference in ignorance of God's will versus ignoring God's will. That's true. For me, once I've received that nudge, once I am aware of God's will for my life, if I ignore it, I'm not walking in obedience and I can't play that grace card, you know, <laughs> because 
I, I have a very clear understanding of what the assignment is. And so I can't excuse it away and say, well, God knows my heart because he does. And he knows that I'm walking in, in disobedience. Yes. A lot of times in my experience, grace is something I've been able to see when I look back at a situation. When we're in the midst of things, it's hard. Okay. I'm going to insert a metaphor or an analogy here. So what I imagine is a kind and loving parent, right? And and that's God. If we just paint a picture of this in the human realm, let's just say you're a parent and you have a child who, you know, does well in school and they do mostly everything you tell them to do. But let's just say one day you ask them to take out the trash or do the dishes, right? Right. And they decide that they're not going to do it. They understand the assignment, but they've just chosen not to do it. Do you as a parent say, well, you know, they they do so well in school or they do everything else I ask. Do you excuse the fact that they won't do the dishes or take out the trash? It hurts your feelings, right? right. It's heartbreaking to know that this child is such a good child, except they won't do what you've asked them to do. So it's kind of how I look at um, in my situation, how God must feel when I'm not walking in alignment to to his will. I feel like good point. as my father, he's given me an assignment and I need to carry that out. Amen. And so a lot of times when I look back on a situation and I can see that I didn't take the step in the moment God told me to, that's when I can look back and see his grace Yes, and how patient he's been with me. So I just want to caution against using that God knows my heart or because of Jesus, we now live under grace because those things, like I said, they are true, but we need to make sure we're not using them as an excuse. One thing, um, I didn't share much in terms of scripture because there's so many examples of obedience. And I really want to encourage people to seek out for themselves because whatever you need for your journey, the Holy Spirit will lead you to that. I could mention many examples. Like a lot of times we hear like Abraham and how he was told to leave his home and go to a place that was not revealed to him right. until he left that place. And we can look at Ruth, who was obedient and and she stayed with Naomi when Naomi told her to go back and, yes. and she was rewarded for her obedience. And Daniel, <laughs> you know, of course. he was obedient um, despite the threat of a lion's den. And that would scare anyone. Jonah, I think, is a really great example because, well, he didn't ignore the assignment. He ran away from it, <laughs> you know. Yes, he did. There's so many examples. And, you know, we we hear all these sermons about walking in victory, but not walking in obedience. And so, I want people to really seek out for themselves examples of obedience in the Bible, because whatever you need for your journey, the Holy Spirit will lead you to that. I can't stress the importance of it enough because we want to walk in victory. God put us here and he gave us an assignment, but he wants us to enjoy our lives as well. Yes, he does. We stand on God's word and we pray and we want to claim all these rights and privileges and and access the throne of God, but we need to be aware of whether or not we are carrying out our responsibility. And so when we're praying God's word back to him and standing on his promises, like our father, we're expecting him to fulfill his promises. Yet if we're refusing to be obedient how can we expect him to fulfill certain promises in our lives? We can't. It's hard because we have to navigate this human realm and we experience all of the feelings, all of the ups and the downs and, and the pressures of it. And it's difficult to walk it out, but there's so much peace that comes with obedience. So if you would please read um, Philippians 4, verses 6 through 7. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer 
and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Thank you. At any given time, we're waiting for God to work out things in our lives. And walking in obedience gives us that peace that surpasses understanding and not a manufactured peace. This is something that I didn't understand the difference until I experienced both. I would describe peace that surpasses understanding as this continual state or almost like your default setting is one of peace. When you're walking in obedience and right standing, you just have so much peace, even if things are not exactly as they should be, you don't need to search for it. Regardless of the circumstances, you just have this overall feeling of peace. Now, the devil will try to creep in and disrupt that peace. That's right. But you recognize it and you learn how to shut it down quickly. And that's why we're told to take every thought captive and bring it into obedience with Christ. And so our human nature, we're still going to have feelings. And if you're going through something difficult, there may be sadness, there may be anger, there may be tears, and it's okay to feel that because God knows how hard it is to navigate the human realm. And we can allow those feelings to process, but the peace is quickly restored. Yes. So that's the peace that surpasses understanding. When peace is manufactured, there are likely more frequent ups and downs, and we're on this perpetual search for peace. Whether you're constantly trying to find ways to relax or escape, you can take a vacation or take a bath, but the peace is fleeting if you're not walking in alignment to God's will, and that turmoil will quickly and consistently return, right? Absolutely. I think it's important to spend more time focusing on obedience because consistently walking in victory is a byproduct of obedience. Strength is a byproduct of obedience. Peace is a byproduct of obedience. Yes, it is. Walking in obedience in every area of our lives, it's non-negotiable if we truly want to do what God put us here to do. Bringing you peace in the midst of the storm. You're listening to Nightlight. Uh, I think the one of the last things I want to share is I want to address people who don't know what they should be doing or feel like they're not equipped. What I'll say about that is if you're confused about your assignment, first and foremost, we should remember that God is not the author of confusion. And when you spend time with him, again, reading God's word, talking with God, listening to God, you may have to spend some time learning how God speaks to you and he will reveal it to us. And it's up to us to carry it out. I found that when God gives us an assignment, it's given in its most purest and easy to understand form. Wow! But sometimes wow. what what happens is, we take over and then we start to apply our thoughts and our plans into it. And we end up doing something completely different than what God intended. It's true. And so other times we may ignore it altogether if we don't believe we're capable. And we have to be aware because it can happen so quickly because that's how our human nature works. And also the devil wants to keep us from our assignment Because he knows that if we walk out our God-given assignment, he will lose power over us. So we must slow down and see what God is telling us to do and then to do it. We have a guest tonight on Nightlight. And our guest is Chastity Dawn. Chastity, that's excellent teaching. Very clear, very important. Anything else you'd like to share on the topic before we close? The last thing I want to share is... um, If we want to live a life where we can experience God's kingdom here on earth, again, walking in obedience is necessary, and we can't stand firmly on the promises of God if we are not kingdom citizens in good standing. We say things like, all things work together for the good, you know, and it's like, yes, the good of those who love God and are called according to to his purpose, and we're walking that out. 
we must answer the call. We must walk according to his will. That's right. And we cannot have an expectation for God to move on our behalf if we won't move on his behalf and do the work that he put us here to do. Again, I just want to reiterate that when I say work, I want to be clear that this is not about putting on a performance and doing something just to get things from from God. Right. It is about walking out our journey. It's not about like, well, I have to do this in order to move God's hand and get him to do that. Yes. Jesus is our savior. He paid the price, but it does not mean that we don't have work to do. I hope that people will will truly understand that. Finally, I just want to share briefly how even this episode is an act of obedience in my journey. And okay. it's serious business, but I love the way that God will give me funny analogies or, or metaphors to help encourage me and, and make me laugh. And that's the beauty of that customized experience in our walk with God. Amen. I had this... Um, thought or like I imagine working at a large store with several departments. And I felt the Holy Spirit say, people are working and playing around in the toy department when they've been called to manage the home and garden department, right? Right. It just made me laugh. And so I was like, okay, you know, I'm I'm gonna do this. I, I manage the home and garden department. So let me be obedient in my journey. But it's hard. And sometimes I think about the fact that truly I'm not sharing anything that has not already been said countless times and in countless ways by many other people. And I wondered, you know, why do I need to do this? I don't feel equipped. You know, I needed to trust God and trust that he would give me exactly what I needed to share this. And I was encouraged by something I saw on social media, and I hope this encourages people in their journey as well. And it said, there are people in this world who need your witness because you are the one they have ears to hear from. Wow. And so that was a reminder that it doesn't matter if I'm saying the same thing that hundreds of others have said. That's right. It doesn't matter if I don't feel equipped. There's someone who apparently needs to hear it from me. Amen. This episode is a a result of of my obedience. And I just want to be open about the fact that it did not come with ease. Like 24 hours ago, I was having a meltdown asking God, why do I need to do this? You know, like, why do I have to speak publicly? I'm, I'm supposed to be hiding out over here in my little, in the world of Chastity Dawn, right? (laughs) Just writing my blogs. And and it just is not working out that way. So I just want people to know that as you surrender to God's will, he's going to reveal gifts in you that you may have never even realized were there. So stop thinking you don't have what it takes and stop letting the days, the weeks, the months, and the years go by because every moment that the devil robs you of makes him happy and the devil will rob you all the way to your deathbed. You know, he is on a mission to keep you from walking out God's assignment for your life. So when you're stuck, talk with God about it, but don't ignore him when he tells you what you need to do. I guess to sum it up, I'm just going to say, trust God in your journey. Don't think that you don't have what it takes because God will fully equip you to do what he called you to do. Nightlight's interview of the week. Has been with Chastity Dawn. Chastity, thank you so much for all you shared. And please, please come back again and visit us again soon. Well, thank you so much for having me again. Uh, It's been an exciting journey. And I am so happy that God allowed our paths to cross so that we can continue to share the word. Listeners, if you'd like to hear more from Chastity Dawn, please do visit her website, chastitydawn.com, where you can read or listen to her uplifting devotional blogs that she posts there regularly. And you'll also find the link to her website below. God bless you. See you next time. Bye for now.